Coming up on Hands on iOS, we are back in the Home app, folks. This time, I'm gonna show you how to add an accessory to your HomeKit home. Hands on iOS is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Hover. Use a domain name that truly represents you and your passion. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. So if you watched my last episode, then you got the brief, but kind of long, but I, you know, I tried to keep it brief, tour of the Home app. It is a packed app that gives you access to HomeKit-enabled accessories, lights and, and cameras and action, well, no, not action, but lights and cameras and bulbs and all sorts of things that you can access uh, from your HomeKit home. You can control those accessories, you can adjust them, et cetera. But now it's time to talk about how to add an accessory to your home. Now, this process, Apple has tried to keep it simple. In fact, one of the things that Apple does in order to have the marketing ability to say, this product works with Apple HomeKit, is it set up some rules and requirements that make it so the accessory is easy to use and easy to add to your smart home. Now, it also means that those devices are more secure. Apple has very stringent rules in place for the security requirements for encryption, for communication between devices. I'm not lying to you when I say there is a very, 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 very long PDF online that I attempted to understand as I was basically trying to break down what it means to be able to add the works with Apple HomeKit badge to a product that you have. It's, it's, it's a long PDF. I'm getting tired just thinking about it. But the good thing is that means that your devices are secure. And what's more, Apple makes it so that if you wanna be able to use this system, then third-party vendors like Eve here, for example, the Eve Home, uh, they have to make it so that you don't need any third-party app you don't need any other thing other than the home app for iOS and the little code that they put on the bottom of the device. And with those two things, you are able to add that to your, your home and control it, access it, et cetera. So this is good because it serves as a little bit of protection between you and a, a third-party vendor. There is no need to sign up for an account and have what you're doing on the device tracked and logged by that third party, anything like that. You can keep it on your local area network and keep those communications happening between the two. So it's a pretty neat feature and one that makes me very happy to use HomeKit as my basis for controlling my smart home. So, if I have this device here, this is called the Eve Room, and it is a small uh, little, here, I'll actually put it down so you can see it here, on my phone to the side here. And it is an, it has an e-ink display, and right now it is currently displaying the temperature in the studio and the abysmal humidity in the studio. No wonder why my voice is getting worn out. Uh, we currently have 34% humidity in here and I'm ready to call the cops. Um, but I can tap this little arrow here and I can switch between different views, maybe. Ah, I was all the way to the right. Um, this little leaf is just giving you an idea of the current air quality in the space. Uh, and it shows you now humidity and temperature as well as these stars are how good the air is based on the particulate sensor that's inside of the Eve room. So it's just different ways to view the current humidity, temperature, and air quality. So I'm gonna switch back to the one with the temperature very big because I'm trying to ignore the fact that the humidity is so bad in here. Uh, so I'll put that to the side again so that I can talk about adding this to your smart kit home because, to your home kit home, because sure it's fun to have this information available on the display here, but I also want to be able to access it from my home app and be able to see this information no matter where I happen to be. So how do I go about adding this to my HomeKit home so that I can see this information 
regardless of where the actual device happens to be. That is the next step. I'm gonna go into the Home app, and you can see that I've set up a actual home within the HomeKit app for Twit here, because this is where I keep my little Eve room. And look, they make it so simple. There's already an Add Accessory button. Now, if you watched my last episode, you will know that normally, in the top right corner, there will be a little plus sign that you can hit to add an accessory or add a scene. So because that's not available, because there's only there are no accessories yet, I can tap the Add Accessory button. And you can see the first thing that pops up is this little screen. And then there are multiple ways to connect an accessory. Some smart vendors, some smart accessory vendors, will include an NFC chip within the device so that you can just bring your phone close to it and connect that way. Most of them go ahead and use a sticker. It's less expensive. Of course, you do have the issue that if the sticker gets worn away or if you lose it, then you do have issues uh, connecting. But there are, of course, pros and cons to both options. Now, if this is your first time adding a, uh, an accessory to your home kit home, then you will get that little prompt, hey, can I have access to the camera from the home app? And then you can tap yes. Uh, this is what it uses that for. So I'm going to prop up my Eve room sensor here, and you can see that the code is on the bottom. Now, you don't need to worry about orientation or anything like that. In fact, these things are, per this, this app is pretty doggone good at recognizing the HomeKit setup code and triggering it no matter how you have your device oriented and where the actual accessory is. Uh, especially if you've gone and installed something and then you remember, oh no, I need to scan that code, which is maybe I'm something speaking from experience. So I had to be down on the ground with my arm way up in the air and it was able to get the code just fine. So I'll show you here by lifting my phone, moving it over and boom, it's got that device. It shows that it's connecting. It's adding this specific Eve room to my home. And this process does take a while, so don't feel like if it's chugging along for a minute, it's not working, it is. It can take a minute. This episode of Hands On iOS is brought to you by Hover. Hover is a jumping off point for many entrepreneurs, and they want you to start your business with a domain name that truly showcases who you are. They have over 300 domain name extensions to choose from, and no matter what you want to build, there's a domain name waiting for it. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. And then it says, look, it's ready to use. Now, this is the screen that shows up next. Depending on the accessory, you may have multiple screens, you may have one screen. In this case, it's one screen because this device does three things. It does air quality, it does humidity, and it does temperature. Now, I can uh, go ahead and name each of these individually. So I want to call air quality. I want to call that air quality. You can tell what it is by the little icon to the left of it. And different accessories will have different things. So Eve Room, it doesn't individually name them, but uh, some accessories will say, if it was called, I don't know, Breathe Room, it would say Breathe Room Air, Breathe Room Humidity, Breathe Room Temperature. I'll call this one humidity, don't call it moist, and then temperature. I tap done, and then I choose what room it's in. I haven't actually set up any rooms in my Twit home yet, so default room is where it puts it right now. I can choose to create a new room, or I can go through the suggested ones. So I'm gonna choose to create a new room, call it office, tap done, tap save, and then it'll say that I want it in my room, which is called office. Now you can choose to include it in your favorites. This, of course, it means it'll be available on that main home tab, as I showed you in my last video. If I turn that off, then it won't put it there. Then in the top right corner, I tap done. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you about this little button here called identify accessory. So maybe you've got multiple accessories that you're trying to get set up or you've got a bunch of different lights and you're not sure exactly which one it is this is especially common if you've got a hue bridge or some other sort of bridge device it may be difficult to remember which exact bulb it is so by tapping identify accessory and i'll show you here 
it will send a command to the device, and in this case, it shows an ID. Most of the uh, bulbs will flash on and off. Uh, different accessories will do different things. So that is what Identify Accessory does. And now I can tap Done. Now you can see that the EVE room with its three sensors are available in my Twit uh, home. And it shows that it's in the office under favorite accessories, and it's already added status information. So I can see that the current humidity, again, abysmal at 42%, and the office is currently at 70 degrees, and then those are the status options. If I tap and hold on this accessory, I can see all three of these sensor options here. So air quality is currently at excellent, humidity sensor is currently at 42, and temperature is at 70. In the bottom right corner, is the settings option. So I can choose to move it to a different room if I want to. If I wanted each of those uh, options, the air quality, the temperature, and the humidity to show up as different tiles within the home app, as opposed to all locked into this one option, I just choose show as separate tiles. And then of course, tapping on accessories shows all three of the individual options. So I will tap to close and then it's available there. Now you may notice that this shows 21.3 degrees. If it was 21.3 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now, I would be shivering my pants off. Uh, it is not 21.3 degree, 21 degrees Fahrenheit, it is 21.3 degrees Celsius. And this is an important thing you should note. Not every single setting in some of your HomeKit-enabled accessories are going to be able to be accessed and controlled with the Home app. It's a bummer, I don't like it, but facts are facts. And so you may have to access and enable those controls using the app that comes with the actual device. So for example, with this, the Eve Home app is the device used to, is the app rather used to control this device. If I tap and hold on my accessory, I tap settings, you can see here, manufacturer is Eve and it shows that I have the app installed, and so it gives me a handy little button here I can tap to open it. I open the Eve app, I can find the proper accessory, and you can see I'm in my Petaluma home right now, so I wanna to change to my Twit home. I can choose accessories, I can choose uh, this Eve room, and then under temperature unit, and we can show it'll change live here. I'll go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and then it sends that information to the Eve room and changes that information over. So now when I go back to the Home app and I close, then it is all available right there as well as on the device itself. So now that I've got this in my Home app, I can control, in this case, this is, not a, uh, this is not a device that you control independently. This is one that is simply for reading information from it. Uh, so if you added a bulb or something like that, you would control it. But in a future episode, we're gonna talk about automation, and we're gonna talk about scenes. And with those, you can use these controls to make changes to that. So for example, if you have a studio that has 42% humidity, which is a little low whenever you're speaking using your little voice box, uh, you may want to set up a smart plug, a HomeKit enabled plug that you plug into the wall and then you plug a nice humidifier into that plug. And then I can say, hey, when the humidity drops below 50, 55%, go ahead and kick on that humidifier so we can all speak and not have our voices get uh, you know, a little gravelly. Yeah, it's kind of nice. So depending on the accessory, uh, you may find that you don't have any individual controls that's just giving you information, but you can use that information in different ways to gain control of your smart home and uh, have those individual accessories automated. That, folks, is how you add and control an accessory in the Home app for iOS. Yes, this was much quicker than the introduction and little walkthrough tour of the Home app. I hope you stuck around till the end for this one, and I'm so excited to continue to provide you with all the information you need to know about the Home app. There's so much more to know. 
So be sure to check out Hands on iOS every Thursday. That's when we publish the show. Uh, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have other things you want me to cover about the home app that maybe you're worried I'm not going to get to or something like that, don't fret. I, I'm probably going to get to it. But if I don't, email handsonios at twit.tv. That's where you can leave your questions, your thoughts, your feedback, etc. You can also head to twit.community because I have set up a topic there asking folks for what they want me to cover here on Hands on iOS. Now, how do you get the show? Make sure you have it so you've got everything you need to know about the home app. Well, you need to subscribe. So if you head to twit.tv slash HOI, Hands on iOS, then you can have links to all the different ways to subscribe. And of course, if you want to subscribe and watch on YouTube, that's youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you're getting so much out of this show. I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear your questions. Of course, we're covering apps. We're answering questions. We're taking a tour through everything there is to know about iOS. All that and so much more. So be sure to tune in next week. Thanks.